That efficacy data from you yesterday was really promising, uh, but we're still all wondering, are we going to need a booster or not? And the CDC hasn't given clarity on this, though vaccine makers seem pretty insistent. What's your stance on if we will need boosters and when? It's great to be back. Uh, in fact, yesterday was an important day for Moderna in that we were able to report some of the most recent data that we've obtained. Uh, from the beginning, we set out to develop uh, the, the, the most effective vaccine against this virus that would last for the longest possible time, uh, help the largest number of people, and be safe. And of course, we had shown a number of those things, but not the piece about how long it may last. And this was the first time we had data that at least showed that six months uh, after uh, the initial vaccinations, we're seeing essentially the same level of protection, which is very encouraging. As you said, uh, the, Delta virus, the Delta strain, as well as a number of other strains that are emerging, uh, pose a set of new threats, and we're also testing against those. So far, what we've seen is that the level of antibodies that we see in our vaccinated patients is adequate to be able to protect against those. But we do think that the, the rate at which this variant is spreading should require that we think carefully about particularly vulnerable people, older populations, certain uh, health-affected individuals whose immune systems may be weak, that at a minimum we should get ready to be able to offer a third booster shot to those and perhaps a larger number. And that's what we're waiting for the CDC and other health organizations to determine. And when it comes to the chemistry of that booster, you know, should that be offered, you know, I assume that'll take into account Delta and some of these other variants. Will it be different than the other shots already available, the vaccine that you have already available on the market because of how the virus has changed? Um, we are, as a technology developer, creating al alternative solutions so that we can let the data indicate what's the best trade-off. Right now, we've shown data that our original vaccine uh, adds so much more antibodies upon a third boost that it is highly protective also against the Delta and other strains. Uh, on the other hand, we're also developing variant vaccines in case we need to switch to a, a more potent, more directed vaccine against those variants. So we're doing the groundwork needed to have choice, and then we're going to work with the governments to be able to make sure we know what's the best solution at a given time. What we can't do in this fight is to basically trail the virus. We need to be ahead of the virus. And to do that, we need to come up with multiple solutions. So whatever the virus does, we're able to respond. So some people are getting boosters anyway, even though they're not recommended. They're just going in and getting a third shot. My mom, for example, she's over 65. She got Moderna six months ago. She loves seeing your interviews here on the show. Would it be prudent for someone like that to go in and get a third shot now, or should they wait? I think that the uh, you know public health is something where if everybody takes these things into their own hands and doesn't follow guidance, I think it could become uh, quite problematic, both from a supply standpoint and also tracking the potential downstream consequences. So I cannot recommend that people do that. I do think that following guidance and, and hopefully the authorities will be uh, quite responsive to what they're seeing out there is the best course. I, I, I'm also aware that there's a number of folks, in fact, there's a number of folks who are immune suppressed, who, for, for example, are getting cancer treatments that I've heard anecdotally are actually getting third doses. And the other thing that's happening, I mean, more and more, and I suspect this is going to increase, is that people are actually getting antibody levels measured, and they're beginning to at least think about how much protection they have. Uh, of course, we're seeing in you know, lots of different discussions about what is it that's protecting us, is it antibodies, is it T cells? There's a very recent report out, I think just yesterday, today, that showed that, in fact, antibodies are the predominant protector against infection, even while T cells and other things are very helpful in fighting back an infection once it happens. So we need to keep the antibody levels high, and we need to be able to track them. Now, when it comes to kids, my kids, eight and under, they're getting ready to go back to school. Vaccines aren't ready. Where is Moderna? It, where's Moderna in terms of progress on a vaccine for 12 and under? And when that comes out, do you imagine it'll be offered from 12 all the way down to, you know, infants? Or will there be, you know, 12 to 5, for example, a, a, you know, a smaller age range, and then younger children come even later? Um, we're doing the studies uh, from 12 down to 6 months. And as the data becomes available, and we've said this, we have hoped this will be toward the middle of the fall, so we're working as fast as we possibly can, the only thing we can't accelerate is time itself. 
we cannot do you know, studies that take two months and less than that time. And, and so some of these things are going to be taking the time it takes. But we're very actively make, getting our tests done, working with the regulatory authorities and the government uh, public health folks so that we're in lockstep. And we, as soon as we can get the data, we will have it. Now, what gets authorized, in what order, is something else that we're going to have to work very closely to do. I can tell you one thing, Emily. Nothing that's happened in the last 12 months, uh, especially in regulating and approving and authorizing a vaccine, would have ever happened without an unprecedented collaboration between the developers and the government and authorities. And that collaboration is continuing and needs to continue until we're completely on the other side of this pandemic. That's the key to success here. Right. You've talked about how vital that partnership really has been. Now, Flagship recently published a white paper on the big lessons from the pandemic. What are one to two things we can do to preempt the next one? I think there's things we could do at the individual level. I also think there's things we could do at a societal level. Uh, at the societal level, I really think we need to reconsider our relationship with healthcare because it seems to us that much of what we call healthcare is actually disease care and that we wait too long to be able to deal with the actual mechanisms underlying our sicknesses. And we now know so much more than even five, 10 years ago about what leads to disease, whether it's infectious disease or any number of the other chronic pandemics that we don't call pandemics, but in fact, they're every bit as pandemic because they afflict everybody in the world. And, and what we need to do, I think, out of this traumatic period is to realize that we, can't, we have to get upstream of disease. We need to think about what are the conditions that allow this to happen? And what can we do to be preemptive, to delay, to deter, to defer disease? All of these things have approaches. Now, it's going to take a big societal change to think about how do you regulate those? What are those products? This is not about healthy living. There's a space between healthy living and being sick that we think is going to get developed over the next years. And, and that's one thing. Individually, I think we need to make sure we avail ourselves to the highest level of protection that we can. We're I'm obviously very saddened and concerned to see just how high a vaccination uh, 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 level we have in some places in the world and how low we have in other places in the world. And we need to make sure at an individual level people act responsibly, not only for their own health, but the health of the people around them that they can seriously, in fact, 